Welcome to Sister Reach's monthly social justice preachers series. I'm Dr. Sylvia Rue, the Faith Education and Outreach Coordinator for Sister Reach. Sister Reach is a grassroots 501c3 nonprofit organization founded by Sharice Scott in 2011 in Memphis, Tennessee. Sister Reach supports the reproductive autonomy of women and teens of color, poor and rural women, LGBTQ plus people and their families through the framework of reproductive justice. Sister Reach's mission is to empower our base to lead healthy lives, raise healthy families, and live in healthy and sustainable communities. This is achieved by working through a four-pronged strategy, education, policy and advocacy, cultural shift, and harm <clears throat> reduction, harm education on local, national, and international levels. Which brings us today's, to today's amazing and wonderful speaker, Valerie Spencer. Let me introduce you to Valerie. Valerie Spencer has worked in the arena of social services, focusing on health disparities as it relates to transgender persons and others within the LGBT communities for over two decades. And she reminds us that's over 20 years, folks. Over time, she has worked with the federal government, health departments, universities, conferences, and community-based organizations around the country ranging from capacity building training, national advocacy consult consultation, and of course, those keynote addresses she's famous for. <clears throat> the directive she gives herself is simple, to make the complex comprehensive. Valerie starred in the 2004 V-Day production of The Vagina Monologues, featuring an all trans women cast and the accompanying documentary, Beautiful Daughters, which aired on Logo and Showtime Networks. In 2011, Los An the Los Angeles Gay Pride honored Valerie with the prestigious Berman Schaefer Award, given for her years of community service and progressive action. In the same year, the California Legislative LGBT Caucus conferred upon her a state resolution, rec recognizing her as a statewide and national leader in the movement for LGBT political and social freedoms. She is the founder slash director of Sacred Vision for Holistic Empowerment Institute, an organization which seeks to merge the evidence-based with the sacred. HEI centers on empowerment on a social, cultural, and spiritual basis for LGBT plus communities. She is also a behavioral th health therapist and outreach and engagement liaison at the Asian Pacific AIDS Intervention Team. Valerie is a national speaker for Merck Pharmaceuticals. She holds a master's degree in social work from California State University, Long Beach, and yes. in yeah, fellow MSW here. And in 2019, Valerie was ordained as an interfaith minister from One Spirit Interfaith Seminary. <clears throat> Reverend Valerie Spencer, she's now Reverend Valerie Spencer, MSW, MSW. She said, I have created myself into the holistic mental health practitioner healer I've always wanted to be. This is my vision for my life and work. So let's start with that, Valerie, welcome. Let's talk Thank about you. your institute, your sacred vision for Holistic Empowerment Institute. Tell us what that means, what it's all, all about. Well, let me correct the reading of that. Okay. I am the founder and the director of vision for Holistic Empowerment Institute. The name okay. of the organization is Holistic Empowerment Institute. First of all, hello, everyone. It is so good to energetically, even if virtually, be in your presence and to virtually break bread in this way. I started uh, HEI, and by the way, you can visit us at beholistic.org. I encourage you to join our mailing list where we will be submitting our offerings for the coming year and some surprises for the remainder of this year. Uh, you may donate handsomely, generously, if you choose to. There's all vehicles on the website at beholistic.org. 
I started uh, HEI because I worked in, as you read from that long bio, they asked for the longest bio. I shortened it, but they wanted the long one, folks. But I started HEI because in my work in HIV prevention, I noticed that we were coming up with some of the brightest interventions, prevention interventions, that the human intellect could imagine, right? And yet, People had drawers full of our condoms. People knew safer sex practices. They were not engaging in those, in those practices. And I came away with the belief that it wasn't information that people needed. They actually needed healing. Mm -hmm. They needed healing, especially queer people of color. We come to uh, public health. We come to behavioral health. We come to HIV, for an example, even COVID, even monkeypox, with a great deal of healing needs. We don't just have informational needs, social cultural needs. We have needs for healing. What do I mean by that? We have issues of religious abuse. We have been targeted in spiritual communities. And we have not been celebrated for the rich, rich, richness that we bring to human development, those of us who are L, G, B, P, Q, I, A, and anything else. We have brought so much, even to this westernized culture, right? I've started noticing something, Sylvia. I've started noticing um, in an advertisement for, I think it was a rent a car, a cable company, and the guy said, you see it? And I thought, that's a gay term. What, what did he know? say? Tell me again. You, you see it. Okay. You see it. And he just kind of threw that out casually. You see it. And I thought, wow, these two straight guys are volleying with each other. But do they know that that is a term from ballroom culture? That's a term from queer culture. We've given so much. And yet we've been minimally affirmed. We've been minimally affirmed. In fact, we've been targeted. We've been marginalized in all of those things, but we've been targeted. But another reason why I started HEI, okay, so we're talking about healing and cultural affirmation. But whenever you talk about trans people, and I'm interviewed a lot, people want, and I'm not interviewed so much because I don't give the people the advertiser that they're looking for. And the advertiser that the people are looking for is, tell me how difficult it is being trans. Tell me, can you entertain me with how hard it's been? Have you ever been abused? Have you been hit? Have you been spent upon? Talk to me about that. And I reached a point some years ago where I had to be very vocal. I'm over talking about the deficits of being trans. I'm very into talking about the beauty of being trans. Why you should be jealous of me if you're not trans. What are the gifts? I don't bring childbirth to humankind. That's not the gifts that the creator bestowed upon this physical vessel. Ah, but the creator gave me the gift of life enhancement, right? So you birth it. I'll make the life thing once it gets here. That's my gift. We have not been affirmed. We've only been talked about in two, in terms of talk to me about how difficult this life is. And so you have trans people even who have developed an appetite for talking about transness in very ostracizing terms. It's awful for me to be trans. And so I went a year and I asked every trans person, tell me the beauty of being trans. Just tell me the beauty of being trans. Whatever your answer is, I'm open to it. Tell me, talk to me about the beauty of being trans. I got a number of different answers. Most of the answers that I got were non-answers. People could not tell me why is it a good thing to be trans. We have been fed a continual diet. We have given a continual diet of difficulty that we can't talk about the celebration. That's one thing. An example of that is this. I hope you're listening, Oprah. But the Oprah Winfrey Show called me years ago and the producers asked me, uh, so how long have you hated your body? And I thought, what? girl, you don't know me like that. What? Now, wait a minute now. Oh. Now, I'm a little thicker. 
where I don't want to be a little thicker, but you know, I'm not Beyonce, but I'm all right on a Saturday night. What's what? And she said, well, aren't you trans? And I said, yes, I'm a trans woman, yes. She said, well, isn't that what trans is, that you hate your body and you want something else? This is hard to believe that I would think... Look, I could continue this story to its conclusion. They got the trans woman that they wanted oh. to talk about the difficulty. Research on your own. Mom's the word over here. Okay. However, I was like, I'm sorry, that's not my narrative. Yeah. That's not my narrative that my body is awful and I want another one. I would like some liposuction and a tummy tuck. But how dare you just assume? So we have educated people about what trans is. And they've come away with a connotation. Hate your body, want another one. Trapped. Trapped. Right. Where is the conversation that says, you beautiful trans person, congratulations for being trans. Congratulations for choosing to be free all of your life in every area of your life, because that's what transitioning means. Right. It means I want to be free, right? I want to be free. You all talk about the genitalia. I want to be free. Mm -hmm. That's what transitioning is about. And so we needed a conversation that talked about the beauty of being trans, the beauty of being queer. The beauty of spiritual, what I call intentional spiritual integration. I developed that language on purpose because the more I talked about HEI, people begin to talk about how are you going to get this thing funded? It's spirituality and in behavioral health. It, that sounds like a church. We're very close to a church. We fly right on the river. We're very close to a church. We provide emotional support. We do some of those things, right? But how are you going to get it funded? Well, that was the conversation I was having for a while, too. It was like, oh, my God, I know I want this thing to be spiritual. I don't want it to be diluted. So I went to my sacred place where spirit drops information into me, and that's Malibu. And God said something to me very interesting. God said, take me out. I'm confusing things. People have so much heat and tension around my name. Take out of it. Yeah. And watch how it will flow. So we removed God. And instead, our goal is to draw people to themselves, to draw people to what I call the sacred relationship. Right. Now, what that is, that's you. If you're having a sacred relationship with a poker chip, that's you. I'm not going to develop that. We've redefined spirituality to yeah. be user friendly. We mm -hmm. define spirituality to be fun. Your spirituality must be a resource. We're not talking about ATM kind of faith, right. right? But we're talking about this spiritual practice contributes to my mental and emotional well-being, right? So it needs to connect you to your sacred core, connect you to a sacred relationship, connect you to within. We're not just talking about self-esteem. We are talking about a sacred internal relationship. We've had to use many words, to define spirituality. And sometimes I just land straight on spirituality, but then redefine it, open it up for people. You know, we felt spirituality hostage for so long. So many egocentric people mm -hmm. have held God, religion, spirituality, spiritual integration hostage in order to control minds, to control culture. God does not eat, need all your vice shall not. The personal relationship alone will clarify that. When I do something that I ought not do, my God speaks to me and says, they're there, Valerie. They're there. You might want to go back and apologize for that. So we bring people to themselves. We take the stop signs out of spiritual development and we point them to spiritual practice as a tool of community and individual mental and emotional well-being. We want you to be well. All of our people are living with a great deal of anxiety, social anxiety. They're afraid to go out in public. They're afraid to be gay bashed. They're afraid to interact with people. Most of my clients that I'm a therapist for who are trans have some form of social anxiety around being around hetero perceived cisgendered people. There's a tool for that. There's a resource for that. Mm -hmm. It's called a self-directed, self-designed, supported, non-judgmental, non-biased spiritual practice. 
Now you get to design what the spiritual practice is. I have I have eight emphasis areas that I won't go into into detail because they're not copy written yet. But <laughs> I have eight, eight emphasis areas having to do with space, having to do with therapy and group support. We want to merge those things together so that your spirituality does not look like something that you practice because you're avoiding hell and punishment. Mm -hmm. But your spiritual practice looks very practical, looks like something that you design because like sex is a part of your spiritual practice. Cool. Now let's put some ethic around that. Let's put a little bit of ethic around it. Right. I will not sleep with somebody else's partner. Right. OK, cool. Let's put some shape around. But if sex is a part of your spiritual practice, let's name it that. Mm -hmm. Right. We're queer people. We're not heteronormative people. We live how we live. We live how we live. Singing in the choir is a part of our culture. Right. We built choir. Right. Not just as black folks, but as queer folks. We built spiritual and religious practice. That can be a part of your service is a part of your where are you volunteering? Are you volunteering at a 12 step meeting at your church in your neighborhood? Are you sweeping the sidewalk? Service is a part of your practice. And all of those things you do. We've turned the tables. You're not practicing to be hell avoidant or punishment avoided. We've thrown away that all together. Right. Accountability is built in to your faith practice because God is, is in communication with you, mm -hmm. right? So you're not alone to develop your own ethics. You're in relationship with your ethics, right? So we've taken the stop signs out of it. And the one, you know, get out of jail free card is that your practice helps to support your mental and emotional well-being. That's what it's for. That's what this practice is for. It's not a punishing practice. It's a nurturing practice that's meant to treat your develop your your depression. That's meant to treat your anxiety and take you into community. We're telling queer people, congratulations for coming out of the closet. And we're also building relationships. There's a few things that I think are missing. Mm -hmm from my perspective, which is a Black, queer, unified, ecumenical voice. We need that. I'll be starting that soon. Mm -hmm. I'll be also addressing some things that speak to the solidarity of the sisterhood of trans women. Mm -hmm. We've just decided this week that even though I had made the decision to make my master class one for all of the queer community, we decided that both trans people and us we're not ready for that universality just yet. We want to keep it for trans women of color. We have a little bit more as an organization to pour specifically into the sisterhood of trans women of color, having to do with what we call compassionate leadership and development. But we will be having other things, affirmative prayer to treat depression, healing at the beach, where we'll be doing movement and somatic work at the beach, healing in the park at Piedmont Park. And we hope to develop partnerships with the house music in Piedmont Park so we can do healing and then people can go into house music and have fun. So we've developed our calendar for next year. I've, as its true Aquarian leader, am spontaneous to a fault. So I'm always adding spontaneous things, adding quick little courses. And my team is like, no, 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 this is more work for you. But this is not more work for me. This is what I've lived to do. I've lived to get away from the specifically HIV machine. And now I'm in the world of healing. And I love it. I love it. I, I've developed a lane. It's not just the world of healing, but part of your healing is bringing out helping people tap into their joy yes. of being exactly who they are. Yes. At this moment in their life, you are perfect as you are. And mm -hmm. there's joy in that. There's a future mm -hmm. in that. And that's what I, I feel so good about your message mm -hmm. is that you have tapped into that. And mm -hmm. it's so much more. And we're allowing people, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, we're no. allowing people to set themselves free. Right. You know, we go up there most Sundays hoping that he'll say something that's going to set us free. Yeah. We go up there hoping that he'll say something that won't condemn us and either will take us out of the hell that we were just put in the Sunday before or the hell <laughs> that we've been. Wrong. We take that out. We take that out. We take that out. Yeah. We're 
we're not using any of that judgment stuff. It never did service. It doesn't service now. Right. It has been a complete, complete mischaracterization of the divine as this evil MF that hasn't reminded me of my daddy from Texas. You got damn me going down on my way. To that is not the divine. That's us portraying the divine. So we hope to make spaces where people can make friends with the creator. Yes. Make friends with the creator. Yeah. And tap into that spiritual power. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is fantastic. And we haven't even talked about your ancestry. We haven't even talked about your ancestral power yet. We haven't talked about the relationship that we haven't cultivated enough as Black queer people. We've got some Black and brown queer ancestors that have been waiting at the chumping bit to assist us and support us with queer guidance. Hey, we're going to tap into some of that too. That's good stuff. Do you want to say more about that? Because I hadn't really thought about that before. And that's, I think that's fascinating. Can you say a little more about that? We put Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera in the death of them. Right. They're now. Energy yeah. does not end. It does not dissipate. It changes form. Right. Marsha, I got some work for you to do, sis. I'm going to pour libation and honor you, Marsha. And then I'm going to put you to work because <laughs> you're waiting to work for me and support me as my ancestor. As Africans, we believe that our ancestors are on the other side of the veil waiting to serve as a support, as guidance, as direction, as power. Right. Well, we've got some queer ancestors, right? Many. My favorite, my favorite is my new, my spiritual father is now my ancestor, Archbishop Carl Bean, the man that raised me and gave me my, my knowing of myself. Mm -hmm. And I've had to holler and say, Bishop, help. <laughs> right. Bishop, help. We have other resources other than crystal meth. We have resources higher and better than fentanyl. We have resources higher and better than grinder. We have resources. Now we've made these people's temple, their edifice, we made it lovely. And we left our power at their gate, hoping that they would affirm us. Mm -hmm. Some of us started our own movements, Bishop Blunder or Bean, uh, O.C. Allen, for an example, started our own movements. And collectively, we're doing pretty good on that front. But individually, listen to our people. They're still hurting. They are still hurting. And that message came from a mouth so trusted that they believe themselves to be filthy rags and abominations. They behave that way. They express sexually themselves to be that way. We're taking that out. Yeah, we're taking that out. We're going to get that message. We'll speak lie to it where available. But we're just going to coexist with that message and strengthen the people who have heard it. We're going to tell them that they're good and perfect and beautiful. That you are, it is a blessed thing to be queer. What a touch. What a touch from the creator to be queer. You've got, I tell my mother all the time, and for those of you who know me, Lulu is doing just fine. She's in the room. I tell her all the time, Lulu, thank God you have a trans daughter. Oh God, aren't you happy? She goes, I have her brainwashed. <laughs> I'm completely brainwashed, <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, I'm a trans woman. And that's a whole nother skill set that I bring to the table. We've talked about transness as if it's something that has to be diagnosed, treated, dealt with, tolerated. No, baby, my transness is my power. Right. My power. I can wiggle into any environment. I can wiggle onto the host role and succeed, but I can get up in that calculus class and let them have it as well. Mm -hmm. I'm a trans girl. There right. you go. We need to change the conversation of queerness. Put back people back into their power. Take them out of the world of anxiety, depression. Coexist with it, make peace with it, find skills with it. But we're giving them additional treatment modalities like intentional joy, like movement, like laughter, like association, like the space, like service, like therapy. We're hoping to give, just amp up 
the availability of treatment options for people to include joy, to be include some holistic things like what I call intentional spiritual integration. And just the last thing about that, I call them intentional spiritual integration because as I was saying before I lost my point, people try to wiggle you away from that point when you're a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. They try to wiggle you away from spirituality because it's not easily fundable. Mm -hmm. I know how to manipulate the language. I, I got it. I yeah. know how to manipulate it. So I use language like intentional spiritual integration. I'm not talking about self-esteem. Neither am I talking about holistic health. I'm talking about spiritual development as a community mental health resource, but spiritual development that is non-biased, that is self-directed, that takes all of that gibbity goo and filler and MSG out of it. We don't need no more thou shall not and no more God thinks you're wrong and this, well, you know, I love you, but God thinks you're awful and filthy and, and disgusting. And here's why we're taking that out. We're taking that out. Good, good. I have a passion. Can you tell? I'm sorry, you what? That I have a passion. Can you tell? Oh, yes. And you're putting it to good use. Lulu, your mom is proud. Bishop <laughs> Carl Bean, I know, is proud. They I raised you well. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to end with that, but I just wanted to thank you so much, Valerie, for being who you are and just being your authentic, beautiful self all the time and uh if you have one more thing to say you can say it if not i do go visit our website okay. please say it if again. you see a spell be holistic b-e-h-o-l-i-s-t-i-c be holistic.org and visit us on facebook on instagram I'm, I'm we're getting a little better with the with the gram uh but join our mailing list donate uh Richly uh, stay abreast of our happenings, participate, volunteer, get on board. If you say, you know, I like the idea of intentional spiritual development and mm -hmm. and cultural affirmation with our community, that's something I want to be a part of. I may not like have a huge amount of time, but I I, I want to. We'll get down with the get down. Come yeah. on with us, and we are more than happy to to take people. Yes, thank and, you so much. And well, thank you, thank you for sharing your wisdom and your your joy and your generosity with us today. And we're going to end it now, but we, you and I will be in touch. And uh, Sister Reach, thanks you so much. Thank you. Bye, Sharice. Bye, Sister <laughs> Reach. I love you, Sharice. I love the CD. I love you, Sharice. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.